use is really easy in the sense that once you know where, where the cartilages are mm -hmm. and the muscles usually are named by the cartilages that they go through okay so believe me by the end of this it won't be that hard it's like a page or two page and a half in your dissector not bad so this cartilage what do you guys think what is it called thyroid. the thyroid cartilage right very good so the thyroid cartilage has two parts of the cartilage coming together to form it okay and the, each part is called the lamina does that make sense so you have one lamina two lamina coming together and this portion is called the angle of the thyroid cartilage what would be another name for the angle lamina. the laryngeal prominence good good exactly it's larynx right it's kind of the laryngeal prominence very good so we talked about the thyroid the one on the bottom it's called what? Cricoid. Cricoid. Good. So the cricoid cartilage is one cartilage which looks like a ring. Okay? The front portion of it is called the arch and the back portion of it looks kind of like this portion, right? So it's also called the lamina. But it's just one lamina. You don't have two laminae coming to form the arch or the angle. You just have one lamina and one arch. Got it? Okay. So then if you just look at the thyroid cartilage again, you have the superior horn of the thyroid cartilage and the inferior horn. The inferior horn is connected to the cricoid. And that's called your cricothyroid joint. Okay? All the joints between the cartilages in your larynx are synovial joints. So they're made of what? Fluid, right? Exactly. Very good. So then another cartilage that you need to know is this big thing, right? What is that called? Epiglottis. Very good. So um, the epiglottis attaches, you know, as a stalk, like this portion below is a stalk. So you have the epiglottis, the stalk of the epiglottis, and it attaches to the inside of this portion, which is the angle of the thyroid cartilage, but on the inside. Okay? And then one more cartilage that your dissector talks about are these cartilages. Okay? And what do you guys think these are called? Arytenoids. Good. So the arytenoids are good to look at in this because they move better. So the arytenoids, if you look at it, it's like a pyramid, right? And you have two portions of the arytenoid that you should know. You have one that sticks out in the back where all the muscles attach to. So that's just called your muscular process of the arytenoid. And then you have one in the front on the inside where if we say this thread is your vocal ligament, it attaches to. So that's called your vocal process of the arytenoid. Vocal process attaches the vocal ligament. Muscular process attaches all the muscles, right? So kind of, kind of the name goes with the structure. Okay, so that's basically the cartilages that we need to know. Once you know the cartilages, you can, we can start talking about muscles because the muscles always go in between the cartilages. Okay, so also with your arytenoid while we're here, I know that they told you in lecture you don't need to know all the motions, but if you kind of know the motions, you know what the muscles do. Okay, so if your arytenoids were to go close to one another, what is that called? Adduction, right? Very good. ADD. If they move away from one another, what is that called? Good, because when you abduct somebody, you're taking them away. Good. <laughs> what is it called? Um, so, and then. Oh, they can also move in the front and the back, and they can rotate side to side, okay? Now, if we talk about muscles, because a lot of the muscles attach to the muscular process of the arytenoid, okay? So the muscles, it's good with this one. This is a really good one. Okay, so if you look at your muscles, right? You have one muscle that's going from this cartilage, which was what again? Very good. To the muscular process of the arytenoid. So it would be called the cricoid. Arytenoid, right? Cricoarytenoid. So the thing about the cricoarytenoid is that you have two different muscles with the same name, cricoarytenoid. The way they are differentiated is by the location. Okay. So this, since this is in the back, it's called the posterior cricoarytenoid, right? And the posterior cricoarytenoid, if you think about this muscle, right, contracting, what do you think is going to happen to this portion? Will it move towards or away? away from it, which was called what again? Abduction. Good. So it will abduct, right? So if both of these are abducting at the same time, do you see what's happening? You'll have an opening in your airway, and the opening is called the rima glottitis. So the rima glottitis will open. Okay? So then, 
let's talk about the one that's the lateral one, right? The lateral one is coming from this portion of the cricoid, which was called what again? Arch. Arch. Good. It's coming from the arch of the cricoid, goes inside and attaches in the muscular process, again, of the original. So now if that, kind of like a lateral one, were to contract, what do you think is going to happen to this one? Move, move away or towards again? Towards, right, this time? So that will be adducting, okay? So then you have another one, which is just involved with the arytenoids. Okay, so the arytenoid muscle kind of has two fibers. You have one that goes straight across, which is called the transverse arytenoid, and then you have one that kind of crisscrosses like this, which is called the oblique. Good. So those, when they contract, it's again moving these together towards each other. So that's adduction too. So with this basically to summarize, what we learned from these three muscles at least is that most of them pull the arytenoids together, right? A lot of them are for adduction. The only muscle that can open up your airway, usually, that contracts to open up your airway, is your posterior, cricho arytenoid. Okay? So then, we need, so, so this is kind of with the arytenoids, then you can start talking about what happens with your pinch, you know? So if you think about it, you have a muscle that goes straight from the inside of the thyroid, to the anterior portion of your arytenoid, what would that be called? Thyroarytenoid, right? So the thyroarytenoid is interesting because if you think about the thyroarytenoid, it's a muscle that has a lot of different fibers, right? Muscles have a lot of fibers in them. The medial portion of the thyroarytenoid, those fibers, are called the vocalis muscle, okay? So the vocalis muscle is attached to that ligament that we talked about, the vocal ligament, okay? So vocal ligament is the one that goes from the, uh, from the angle, you know, kind of the same way where the epiglottis attaches, to the vocal process. So if the thyroarytenoid contracts, what do you think happens to the arytenoid? Will they move forward or back? Forward, right? So they move forward. So what's going to happen to the vocal ligament? that's attached to. Will it stretch or shrink? Shrink, right? So it will lower your pitch. That makes sense? So because they all act as a unit, the pyroarytenoid contracts, moves the arytenoid forward, the vocalis relaxes, the vocal ligaments that are attached to the vocalis relax too, and your pitch gets lower. Okay? And the one that increases your pitch is this muscle that goes between the art. It kind of is almost the lateral portion of the cricoid, cartilage to your thyroid cartilage, okay? So the cricothyroid. And the cricothyroid, when this contracts, what would happen to the thyroid cartilage? It moves forward, right? So what's going to happen to the vocal ligament that's attached? It will stretch and it will increase your pitch. So you have one that increases pitch, you have one that decreases pitch, and then the vocalis itself is just the one that fine tunes. It modulates your pitch. Did you say this contracts and this goes from the When the thyroid. When the thyroid, exactly. Because it's from the cricoid to the thyroid. Yep. The one that is the thyroarytenoid controls the arytenoid. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like both of them moving close together, the thyroid and the arytenoid. So it kind of relaxes your whole body. Yeah. So that's basically the main thing, the muscles. So now that you know the muscles, it's really important to know the nerve supply, right? That's kind of the last portion of the dissecting. So with the nerve supply, what you have is, we pointed out this joint, right? Which was the cricothyroid joint. So if you look in some of the bodies, you know, some of your classmates have pretty good dissections, is that there's a nerve that goes right over here, okay? So the nerve is called your recurrent laryngeal. But the thing is that the recurrent laryngeal, when it travels up, once it's behind the cricothyroid joint and above, it's called the inferior laryngeal nerve. It just the name changes. So make sure that you know your your location when you're you know on your practical. So if it's down here, it's still the recurrent laryngeal. If it's up here, it's the inferior laryngeal. Okay, because the name has changed. And then 
you have, so if we talk about now, now that you know that this is the inferior laryngeal, it's the one that supplies most of the intrinsic muscles of your larynx. So all the muscles that we talk about are the intrinsic muscles. The extrinsic muscles are like your suprahyoid, your infrahyoid, your stylopharynges, those are all extrinsic. The intrinsic muscles are supplied by the inferior laryngeal except for one muscle, okay? And that one muscle is the one that we just talked about, which is your cricothyroid. Because the cricothyroid is not by the inferior, it's by the superior. And if you look at the superior laryngeal, it gives off two branches, right? It gives off the external branch that supplies the cricothyroid, and the internal goes through the thyrohyoid membrane to supply sensory. So motor, again, is the external and the inferior laryngeal. Sensory is because it's divided by the vocal fold. So if you look at the vocal folds, right? Vocal fold is just the fold that's covering the vocal ligament. So can you picture that, right? You have the vocal ligament, the mucosa covering it is called the vocal fold, okay? So the vocal fold, everything above it, the sensory is the internal branch of the superior laryngeal. We just talked about external being the motor, Internal, which goes inside, supplies sensory to everything above the vocal fold. And the sensory below the vocal fold is the same one that supplies most of the muscles of the larynx, which is the inferior larynx. Yeah, so it just it's, it's not that hard. But once you know the muscles and kind of the cartilages, it's just figure out how you can put these things in conceptually. Because a lot of the larynx 